Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Eureka at Home. My name's Ian, I'm your storyteller this morning, and it's quite early in the morning, it's half past six. I'm not usually up at this time in the day, uh, but uh, I thought I'd get up early, because sometimes an early start is good for your heart. Uh, so here I am, and as you can see, I've got the hedgerow behind me, but if I turn this way, you can see where I live. This is our boat, our home, and she's called Hawker. And we're down on the canal side here. But what's very exciting about this morning is I'm not alone. No, it's not my wife. Jo is still tucked up in bed because she's been working hard on the puppets for our next story, which is going to be next week. It's a special story. I'm very excited because I'm not alone because behind me is... Uh, something I've been pining for for a while. She's been stuck in a lay-by in the north of England for some weeks now because of the coronavirus. But I have behind me the one and only Vera. Vera my Vado that uh, I tell stories out of. And if you've been down to Eureka before, you'll, uh, you'll have met Vera where I tell stories. And uh, here I am, I feel at home again. Uh, next to Hawker with Vera alongside and I thought I would tell you a little story to keep you company and I hope you like the story it's one of my favourite stories and uh, this week's theme we were talking to uh, Professor Pumpernickel and uh, Gacko about what theme each week we have a theme for our stories and songs that we send to you and we were talking about the theme this week and we thought what we needed was a little bit of L-O-V-E, love. Because you can't get enough love in the world. And so I scratched around inside my noggle box to find a good love story for you. And I thought, I know. When I'm down at Eureka, I've told this story a few times. And uh, it, always, uh, it always goes down well. So here's a little story. And if you listen carefully, in the middle of the story, there's a little riddle you to try and answer but don't worry I'll, I'll, uh, I'll help you along with that one so the story goes like this once upon a time a long time ago in a far-off land there lived a princess now this princess she had everything that she ever desired but the problem about this princess was she was never she moaned about everything. And I'm sure the boys and girls at home aren't like that. She moaned that the grass wasn't green enough. She moaned that the sky wasn't blue enough. She moaned that the servants were lazy. The food was tasteless. Moan, moan, moan. Well, eventually, after everybody had complained, her dad, who was the king, he had to do something about it. Now, listen, I'm about to say something, and I don't want you to blame me, because they're not my words. They're the words of the story. One day, and being as this is an old story, the king went to the princess and said, you know what? I have an answer to you moaning all the time. What you need is a husband. You need to get married. She said, I do not. He said, yes, you do. And you know what? I've lined up a long, long list of princes who are going to come and see if they can do the job. Well, the very next day, in the throne room, the princess she sat in her finery upon her little throne and above hers was the king's throne and he sat there in his regal robes and his crown upon his head. Outside, waiting nervously, was a long line of princes who had come from far away lands, you see. And the king turned to the princess and said, Now listen, by the end of the day you're going to have a husband. And when these princes come in, I don't want you to embarrass me. Okay. Well, the princess, she sat there with what can only be described as the monk on. That's what we call it in Yorkshire. 
She sat with her arms crossed and her face like fat. Mm. Well, who would want to marry that, thought the king. Well, the door was opened and in came the princess. And, well, immediately the princess, she started her job. She said, that one is far too short. That one is far too tall. That one's too big. That one's too thin. And that one looks weird indeed. Until eventually, by the end of the day, there were no princes left. They'd all gone home looking miserable and deflated. But not the princess. The princess sat on the throne looking quite smug. <laughs> and the king, he was furious. He said, listen you, I'll make you a promise right here, right now. For I am not just your father, I am the king. And what the king says is always true. The next man you meet, you'll marry him, whether you like it or not. I don't care. No, I won't, said the princess. Yes, you will, said the king. Oh, no, I won't, said the princess. And she stamped her foot on the ground. Something I also know that you lot don't do, do you? No. She stamped her foot on the ground, and then she ran as quickly as she could up to her room. And she threw herself down onto the bed and she kicked and she screamed until eventually she cried herself to sleep. But you know, all that time, somebody had been watching. Somebody who couldn't come into the castle because nobody would like it if he came anywhere near the castle. And so he always hid. And he'd watched that day go by, and he'd watched the princess run to her room, crying. But it wasn't just that night that he'd watched. He's watched for ever such a long time, the princess, through her window, in her room, combing her beautiful hair. I say it's someone. Actually, it was something. It was an ogre. Now, don't you worry if you don't know what an ogre is, because I shall describe him. He was as tall as two houses on top of each other. He had great big googly eyes. His nose was bulbous, and there were black hairs coming out of his nostrils with bogies on the end. He got broken teeth. He got hairy chest. And when he walked, his fingers scraped on the ground behind him. He got great big feet, bare they were, with hairs on his toes. And his feet smelt like Edam cheese that had been left out in the sun too long. He was horrible. But he might have been horrible. And he might have been big. And he might have been googly. But I'll tell you something about that ogre. That ogre had a very large heart in his chest. And do you know, morning, he'd fallen madly in love with the princess. And he desired to live with that princess for the rest of his days. Well, he'd seen her that night up in her room, crying herself to sleep, and his heart, well, it bled at the thought of her being upset. And so he did something that you might think is bad or you might think is good, but it's what he did. He took his great big hand and he stretched it up and he put it in through the window and he scooped up the princess in the palm of his hand. And his hand was so big and she was so small that she fitted very neatly in the palm. Well, he put his other hand on top to keep her warm and very slowly and lightly as an ogre can, he tiptoed away from the castle. Well, he went all the way down the road, down the valley, and he went over the hill, and he went round the corner, and over another hill, until eventually he was far away, because he got very big strides on very big legs. And he came to a valley he called his own. 
Now in that valley, he built something. And he built it only with his own hands. He built a tower as tall as a church steeple. You can imagine, I'm sure. Now this tower was the strangest thing. You see, it had no door to get in through and no stairs to climb up it. All it had was a window at the top of the tower. And through that window, there was a bedroom. And in that bedroom, there was a bed. Well, it was a beautiful bed. And the ogre, he stretched up his arm and he put her in through the window and he laid her on the bed, you see. Well, as you can imagine, this tower with no door to get in through and no stairs to climb up nor down, there was no way out of the tower. The only way would be to <whistles> jump. And I'm sure nobody would want to do that. No matter, the princess, she laid in her bed and she slept soundly, unaware that she'd been taken anywhere, until eventually <coughs> she woke up the next morning. And as she woke up, she gave a little princessy stretch and a yawn. Now, this is my best princessy stretch and a yawn. And you can have a little practice yourself at home. It goes like this. <laughs> go on, have a quick go. Perfect. And then she opened her eyes and looked around and suddenly she realised that she wasn't at home. And she got a little bit frightened and she shrieked. <laughs> well, that brought the ogre running. And he came along and he said, Princess, Princess, whatever is the matter? She said, Where am I? And who are you? He said, Princess, Princess, don't you be worrying. I'm the ogre. And... Uh, Last night I watched you crying yourself to sleep and I felt very sorry for you. And you know, I thought you didn't deserve to have to live there unhappy and so I scooped you up and brought you here to this tower I have made for you with my own hands and I thought you could live here with me. You see, I might be an ugly ogre but I've got a kind heart and I've fallen in love with you and I thought you might fall in love with me and we could get married. Well, the princess looked at the ogre. And at first, she had a turned down face. But suddenly, she gave out a little sound. It went like this. <laughs> he said, princess, why are you laughing at me? I don't know. Right. She said, me? Marry you? I wouldn't marry you if you were the last thing on earth, would you look at yourself with your great big googly eyes and your broken teeth and your smelly feet like Edam cheese. I wouldn't marry you, she said, if there was nothing else to marry in the world. He said, oh, I thought you were a nice princess. I thought you were a beautiful princess, but it turns out you're very not, not very nice at all. Here's me making you beautiful towers to live in, and you treat me so bad. That's it. Nobody should deserve to have a put up with you. I'm going to leave you in this tower forever, and nobody will ever see you again. Suddenly, the princess just changed her tune. She said, no, please. No, don't leave me here. I want to go home to me, Dad. I'll change me ways, I promise. He said, no, I'm not letting you go. She said, please. But he did love her. And he turned to her and he said, listen, I'll do you a deal. I'll ask you a riddle. Now, a difficult one at that. And if you can answer my riddle in but three guesses, I'll take you home. But if you can't answer my riddle, you'll stay here forever. And you will marry me, whether you like it or not. Well, the princess looked at the ogre and said, a riddle? Is that it? That's what buys my freedom? A riddle? A children's trinket? Well, I can answer any riddle in the world, so answer away, ask away. The ogre said, hey, it's a hard one. She said, I don't care. I might also be beautiful, but I'm also brainy, and I can answer any riddle in the world, so ask away. He said, right. A round box without a lid, but inside a beautiful star is hid. 
Well, at first, the princess looked confused, and she said, Would you ask me the riddle again? He said, A, a round box without a lid, but inside a beautiful star is hid. What is it? Well, the ogre went away, leaving the princess sat on the edge of the bed, looking out the window across the land. And in the distance, she could almost imagine her king and the castle that she'd grown up in. And do you know, she felt something she hadn't felt for a long time. She felt lonely and she felt lost. But as she put her mind to the riddle and she sat and she thought, now come on you lot out there, you start screaming at the screen what answer you think it is. A round box without a lid inside a beautiful star is hid. And while you think, I'll say good morning to this gentleman. Good morning. What's that you say? Oh, I think I heard somebody shout, the sun. The sun, I suppose that is round. And, uh, I suppose it is a, a star of sorts. Should we try it? Okay. Well, the ogre came back and said, Princess, have you got the answer? She said, I have. I've thought about it very hard, and I think the answer is the sun. He said, the sun? <laughs> no, it's not the sun. That's not the answer to my riddle. You'll have to think again. Well, off went the ogre, and the princess started to worry now. <clears throat> If it couldn't be the sun, then it must be something else. So come on, everybody, start thinking and start shouting at your screen. What could the answer be? Oh, I can hear lots of things coming through, but hang on. I've got one there. Somebody said a jewellery box with a ring inside. Huh, that's quite a nice idea. A jewellery box can be round, I suppose, and a, and a, and a ring. Uh, uh, maybe the diamond is the star. Let's give it a go. Well, the ogre came back and the princess said, now, listen, the sun was a bit of a throwaway answer, but I think I've got it this time. I think it's a round jewellery box and inside there's a ring with a diamond like a star. He said, a, a round jewellery box? No, a jewellery box has a lid. My box has none. Nay, it's not the answer. And now you've only got one last guess. Well, the ogre went away again, and the princess, she really started to panic. And she sat on the windowsill, looking out across the land, and again she could almost uh, imagine the voice of her father, and the hustle and the bustle of her home. And suddenly, she felt something else she'd never felt before. She felt sorry. Sorry for all those years that she'd been awful to the people she grew up with. And she so wanted to go home, when suddenly, something welled up. This feeling was so strong, it came out through her eye. There was a tear. The princess, she started to cry, crying tears of sadness. And that tear, it dribbled down her cheek and onto her chin, and it dripped. Now, because she was sat on the windowsill, it fell just like anybody would have to do if they were to try and escape from the tower. And it fell all the way down to the ground. Now in the ground, under the earth, there was a seed waiting, just waiting for a little bit of rain to feed it so it could start to grow. And the tear, it made its way to that seed and it touched it. Now let me tell you something that I know about princesses. They're magic, you see, you might not know this, they have uh, magical kisses, and they also have magical tears. And that tear touched the seed and it started to grow. Now if you had to blink just one eye, it would have been a little sapling of a tree. If you had to blink the other eye, it would have been a full grown tree. If you had to blink both eyes together, come on, let's do it. Notice that on the end of one of the branches of that tree, there was the answer to the riddle. There 
is an apple. And the tree, to thank the princess, it stretched up its branch and it stretched it out towards the princess who held out her hand and it let go of the apple and she held it there in front of herself. Well, that's when the ogre came back and said, Princess, it's your last guess. Do you have the answer? She said, I don't know, but I do have this beautiful apple, a round box without a lid. But is there a star inside an apple? Shall we find out? It just so happens I've got my trusty pen knife. And uh, if I cut open this apple, whoa, let me see. Very juicy apple. There we go. A round box without a lid. Inside, a beautiful star is hid. It is, of course, the place where the seeds live. And so, the ogre knew that the princess had got the answer to the riddle and he had to fulfil his part of the bargain and so he knew he had to take her home. And with a very down heart, he picked up the princess in his hand and he carried her out from the valley, over the hill, round the corner, up through another valley and up the road until eventually they came back to the castle. And when they arrived there, he put her down on the ground and he turned to leave. And that's when his tears arrived. But you know, the princess had spent so long with the ogre. And really, he'd been the one that had shown the error of her ways. That she whispered gently, Ogre, turn your head towards me. And the ogre turned and he lowered his cheek down. And she kissed him on the cheek. Well, I did tell you the tears and the kisses of princesses are magic. And suddenly there was a flash of light. And standing there was no ogre. Standing there was a prince. Who'd been turned to an ogre some years before. But that, dear friends, is another story. And you know, they kind of have already fallen in love. And the king had said that the next man that you meet, you'll marry him. Whether you like it or not. But she did like. And they were married. And I heard from the man that told me this story that they lived happily ever after. And that, dear friends, is the end of my little story for you this week. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you're safe wherever you are. And I hope to see you all soon down at Eureka Kaka for some fun in the sun. But until then, that's the end of your story. My name's Ian, the storyteller. Here's Vera from our home, Hawker on the Canal. Much love, much light. See you all soon.